I'm Isaac, the Mothologist, and since the last time I made an update on my insect collection, uh, it grew quite a bit. So, as you can see, I've got a few of my specimens. i got two wooden boxes filled with insects, and I've got a little smaller cardboard one filled with uh, Luna Moss. So, yeah, let's begin with uh, the left box here on the top right. We'll get to the top left, rather, and then we'll go to the bottom right and do the same for this one, and then I'll show you the Luna Moss. All right, let's get started. So up here, I've got most of my beetles. All up here, and then down here. And it goes all the way down, and all the way to the left. So these are all my beetles. And up here we've got, of course, probably one of the most commons. Uh, this is the June bug. And this one here is the very first insect I ever collected. You can tell by the quality, it's missing the tips of its legs, the antennae. Well, I still got one of them, but it's in a, in pretty ancient condition. We've got some, uh, another one under, and a third one, and three more over here, and up, we've got diving beetles, which is uh, one of my favorite beetles. Uh, they're really like, I don't know, slick, so that they can swim through water. They're aqua dynamic, if that's a, if that's even a word. And here got another June bug. Here we've got like a, a, a back swimmer. That's what we call them around here. We call them back swimmers. And these bite. They bite hard. I learned that the hard way. And here we've got my bit, my biggest, biggest beetle in the collection, which is a, a giant giant diving beetle. Found this one uh near a bathroom and it got squished on you can see on the right elytra there's a bit of a crack. Around the top, right above the pin there's a little crack there that someone stepped on it. And that just shows how uh how hard the elytra is. And putting that pin in there was a, a bit of a challenge. Anyway, uh here we've got uh some dung beetles. Now I never thought I'd find a dung beetle at the beach, but for almost all of these, that was in fact the case. Uh, so yeah, these two I found at the beach, and this camera, I just realized, picks up their iridescent green. I've never noticed that with the naked eye. It might be, it might just be the lighting. It's got iridescent green on it. Very beautiful. This one is my best pinned. Uh, the these these three were found dead already and all uh, hard, so this one actually I glued uh, the elytra back. You kind of see there, bit of the glue, and so this one found alive and it's pretty well pinned except for that leg there. It could be a bit more symmetrical, but nah, it does the job. Then here we've got a giant one. Uh, I found this one about a week ago. And this is the same time my father found a Cecropia moth. Uh, we didn't actually find the Cecropia moth. He saw it while biking. He just passed by. But under is what's really cool. Look at that. I call it a nebula shine just because of the purple colors. It's got iridescent purple all under it. And most of these have. These ones... In fact, I don't know if these ones have uh, the iridescent purple. Let's just see. Let's... Uh, so these ones lack the iridescent purple. They still have some shine, just no color. Um, but I know this one has the purple. Yeah. And that one's from France. Actually, uh, my friend found this one. Right from France. Anyway. So... That's the giant dung beetle. And over here we've got... The name slipped my mind. But they live in wood. They live in rotten trees. I always find them near rotten trees. And these are pretty big too. They're my third biggest beetles. Pretty cool, pretty cool. And to the right we've got some tiger beetles. These are always awesome to find. You can see the beautiful iridescent uh, green and blue. It's got like a blue tint to it depending on the angle. Uh, for some reason my camera doesn't really want to pick it up. 
but to the naked eye, you can see the iridescent blue. We got some other tiger beetles here. Oh yeah, this is a six-spotted tiger beetle. These ones had the name slipped my mind, but these are also tiger beetles. This is uh, the the small one, the teeny tiny one. And yeah, we've got my favorite kind of beetle, the longhorn beetles, and you can see why they're beautiful, elegant longhorns. This box actually fell not too long ago, so like, lots of beetles, their legs are missing, or some antennae are missing, as this one. See the difference? These are the same species. Long antennae, and these ones are a little short and all cut up. I had another, uh, Spotted a sire beetle, but it broke completely. But I found another one also at the beach for some reason. Um, in the water, this one. I think what it is is that when there's a full moon over the ocean, all the all the insects are attracted to the full moon, and they actually go in the water and drown. And this is how I found this one. And because they're in the water, um, it's an it's an advantage and a disadvantage. Uh, mostly because, well, they don't get all, like, hard and difficult to pin and difficult to rehydrate, but they do rot faster. If you don't disinfect them, they will rot in your collection. So, yeah, we've got, these are the longhorn beetles, and here we've got the ground beetles. You find these under rocks, under logs, near rivers, usually, in your backyard, and they've got a nice iridescence to them. There's my green and purple, another green and purple. This one's got like a blue and aqua and a green, a bit of a turquoise as well. Uh, this one has like a wine rust color to it. And also some green. Uh, same, same thing here. A rusty color. I like a copper. And here we've got some other ground beetles, some green ones. These are cool looking. Above we got some more iridescence. Some more green ones. And this is a... That's a, also a ground beetle, yeah. These ones are cool. They've got red and green, like Christmas. i got plenty of those. Um... Uh, these guys are awesome. They got little bumps on their body. And if I remember right, this one. So the bumps are arranged in a certain way where when they go on dunes of sand and all the mist goes and the moisture goes, all these lead to their mouths. So in deserts, usually you find uh, similar looking insects. And that's how they get water. In the early morning, they go on dunes on little hills and they collect all the moisture. And then they roll down. Uh, here we've got click beetles. Um, here are click beetles. These ones are similar. In French, we call them coleopters. But these click beetles, they're actually called click beetles because uh, when you hold them, they move their head. And there's a little... Uh, the way... They're made is that when they move their head, they jerk it back and it does like a click sound, probably to war off predators, but it also makes them jump. When they're on your hand upside down, they click and they like fly off. It's pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, here we've got what I believe is called a citadel beetle. That's why I call it a beautiful, beautiful, I'm um, uh, yellow on there and is it iridescent on the bottom that's my question right now it is not but under the elytra is an iridescent green i believe which if i find another one i will uh show off the wings and under the elytra you've got a bunch of ladybugs all right get ready these are all ladybugs here's a two-spotted one it's black with two red spots this one had a parasite in it, and when I put it in the collection, the parasite had come, started coming out. It was really disgusting. In fact, yeah, you can see some ladybug bodily fluids there. That's what it is. So we've got other kinds of ladybugs. I believe this one, no, that's not the rare one. Um, 
And this one is actually a mimic. This is not a ladybug, but it pretends to be, and most people uh, think it's a ladybug. So you can see a bit of the difference between typical ladybug and this one. So here he's got plenty of spotted ladybugs, some of them with uh, wings out. Uh, I'm not really proud of the way the wings are. I could bring them more up, but these were my first time doing wings. And these are some flower beetles. You find them on flowers, obviously. This one, a Japanese beetle, a horrible invasive species. Um, all over Quebec, everywhere invasive. Super cool beetles. And, oh yeah, this one is my favorite. Um, these two are my all-time favorite beetles. I don't know, they look pretty awesome. And got some more. These are pretty nice. They have cool leopard power, like leopard kind of markings on their elytra. They've got some white ones and some colored ones. So, yeah, these are the beetles. Here we've got diptera, so flies. And these, so up here we've got a horsefly, um, some kind of bee, I forget what it is, robber flies, um, another horsefly, there we go, more bee mimics, mm. hoverflies or drone flies, these hovering plates are really cool looking, this one just looks like a bumblebee. Like, these two, they're basically just pretending to be a bumblebee. And we've got some bottle flies here. Nice, uh, this one's got a nice iridescent purple to it. And this one is a big hairy guy. Pretty cool looking. When you see them fly by, it's like, whoa. Get a haircut, or like, <laughs> a lawnmower. Here we've got some more flies. Ah, the classic, the classic fly, the house fly. Bees you see a lot. Some bumblebees right here. This one's pretty cool. I think it's called a scorpion fly. Got a long ovipositor. This one also a wasp. In the corner here, we've got some love bugs. Uh, queen ant or princess ant. Started flying around, so probably not a queen ant yet. Some more flies. This one's a velvet ant. I found this at my school. That's pretty awesome. Some more bees. Love bugs. This one, uh, this one's a abdomen fell off. Unfortunate. Another ovipositor wasp. I used to have the big, 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 big ovipositors with like the, like, Five inch long ovipositors is pretty crazy. Here we've got a yellow jacket. Classic, classic wasp. Hornet, yellow jacket. And yeah, let's move on to the creakies. So, let's see if I can't really focus. Here we've got some crickets. You can see uh, the wings are spread out. Uh, for some reason, I've got a pigeon wasp here. Which isn't actually a wasp. You see the ovipositor, but it's in the same family as, you know, wasps um, and ants. And yeah, so back to the crickets now. We got some more crickets here. This one's a cave cricket or a camel cricket. I never really identified it that well, but I know it's one of the two. Uh, leaf footed squash bug. This is a beautiful green one. Never lost its color. It looks exactly like how it was when I first found it. And some little tiny ones. This one is also here. So yeah. And let's just oh, my finger went in the way, sorry. Look over here. Another beetles. This one's very beautiful. 
iridescent green. It's not every day you see a quick beetle like that. Um, these ones are cool. I think they're called leaf jumpers. Here's a bull. It looks like a bull. These ones look like thorns. Leaf hoppers, maybe. Some stink bugs. This is a big stink bug. The largest one. This one, I have no idea what it is. I haven't been able to find it on any internet web page or in any of my books. So if you can identify it, uh, be free. Uh, feel free to go in the comments and identify it. I have no idea what it is. But it's, uh, it's pretty cool looking. Uh, I can't get too close or my camera unfocuses. Let me try to focus. Come on, you can do it. There you go. So you can see it there. Uh, these ones eat rotten flesh. Do I know for a fact? Because I always find them on roadkill. When I go in walks. Uh, wait, this might be a tiger. I used to think it was a tiger beetle because of like the mandibles. I don't know. It looks pretty cool though. These ones look like sesame seeds, I find. Another iridescent. Lots of iridescence in these ones. Uh, believe it or not, this is a firefly. This is what they look like. And when I flip them over, you can see the part on the bottom, the white part. Sorry, I'm shaking my leg. I don't know why. I have shaky, I have shaky, clumsy hands. You can see this is the part that glows during the night. And my nails are dirty. I've been doing some gardening. Should probably wash my nails. And camera stopped focusing. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. There you go. So these ones. Come on. Come on. Focus. There you go. These ones actually hurt when you when you touch them. Uh, not this one, but this one. Uh, don't touch them. They they release like an oil, and it gives you burns. And we've got weevils. Little green ones that are everywhere. Got some uh, ambush bugs. Carpet beetle. Another creek crew. Oh, and here is actually not a, uh, a beetle. It's a, actually an arachnid. And it's the worst arachnid. The tick. I found this one on my cat. So I got a little little bastard here, and I've got uh, more arachnids over here. These are uh, pseudo scorpions, so they don't have a stinger. They only have the little claws. And I've got another one in the freezer right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna take it out to uh, and this claw is actually hanging by like a fiber of dust. Like I'm I kid you not, this is held by a fiber of dust. If I blow on it, it will come off. And that's like <laughs> how crazy that is. And they're super small. These are my fingers. So miniature. I'm surprised I didn't put like a little uh, piece of uh, paper triangle there. I pinned straight in their abdomen, <laughs> which was probably not the best thing. But anyway, here we've got some nice cicadas. Cicadas are fun. And some dragonflies. And some damselflies. These are pretty large damselflies as well. The black winged damselfly, male and female. These are also male and female, and they got iridescence to them. There we go. Well, my camera doesn't focus with the white backgrounds, unfortunately. Doesn't work like that. And so yeah, here we've got all the cool stuff. And now we're going to the Lepidoptera, so butterflies and moths. Uh, here we've got a swallowtail. This is a Canadian tiger swallowtail. Uh, not to be confused with the Eastern tiger swallowtail. There are subtle differences, but they're still here. Uh, for one, it's a bit paler. 
and the eye spots and the and the blue are different. And let me flip them over. Let's see. So it's got a bit of yellow there. So it's a little bit different. So yeah, this is a. Uh, I haven't identified the sex yet. I don't know if it's a male or a female. I'm betting on a male, but maybe it's a female. I can't really tell with the abdomen, or usually they have like little subtle differences in the inside of the wing pair. But yeah, a tiger swallowtail, beautiful. And here we got a mustard white. It's just plain white. But on the underside, you can see some veins. And these are more prominent in spring. The veins, this is a summer form. I have two forms, one's a spring form and a summer form. This one is a summer form. We got uh, some coppers, American copper and uh, another copper. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, which one is this? This is... I completely forgot, but it's another copper. This one's an American copper. It might be male and female. It's been so long, and it's just after the winter, so like I forgot. So this, well, after it's already almost July, but <laughs> the point is I forgot the name. We got some skippers, dusty wing, and a hair streak. And I got some blues there. So blue azure, uh, silvery blue. Spring is her. This one's actually a moth. This is a day flying moth. And the way I found that out is because the antenna looked weird. If not, I would have classified it as like maybe a dusky wing. Because it wasn't any of my books or on the internet when I searched up white and gray butterfly. <laughs> well, you can see also on the underside. So this is a moth. Pretty interesting. Got another, uh, another uh, skipper here. Here we got some comma butterflies, uh, oh, my finger again, some gray commas, and focus please camera, some gray commas, and a Baltimore checker spot, and the reason they're called commas, if you didn't know, is because on the underside, on the underwing here, you can see there's a slipper comma, focus, focus, there you go, like a little, little gray silvery comma spot and then the question marks well clearly it's because there's a question mark barely though it's more like a well, uh, I don't know what they're calling in English never mind so yeah these have commas the other ones have question marks here we got some fritillaries um, a sulfur a clouded sulfur it's a moss here's a hook tip another moss and here is uh, much related to this one is the morning cloak, um, Nymphalis antiopa. And on the underside, you can kind of see it's got a bit of like a dot there. Focus, there we go, a bit of a dot. And uh, there we go. So, yeah, this is pretty much this box. So, it's a bit of everything. We got some beetles, some dragonflies, some butterflies, cicadas, and some grasshoppers. Now let's go to the moth box. All right, so here we got a bunch of moths. So we got Saturnia Day, some sphinx moths, all kind of moths everywhere, and butterflies. Just Lepidoptera. I don't think there's anything else than Lepidoptera in here. Um, so yeah, let's start with the Sphinx Moth. So up here we've got a big poplar Sphinx. These ones are pretty large. They got the biggest uh, body of all, even bigger than my uh, Polyphemus. So yeah, big poplar Sphinx Moth. We've got uh, some more Sphinx Moth. These are eyed Sphinx Moths. Love them. So this is a blinded Sphinx Moth. Cloudy eye. A small eyed Sphinx Moth. Mm, and these are, I think they're just called eyed sphinx moth from where I come. Where I come, uh, it's just called eyed sphinx moth. 
and it's really too interesting. We got some of the pink colors there. Look at this camera. You can do it. All right, so well, I wanted to show the cute face, but camera's stubborn and not working. So I guess you can see them. Some uh, bumblebee sphinx moths, or some some people call them bluebird sphinx moths. I call them bumblebee sphinx moths or hummingbird sphinx moth. We got little lobster tails there. These are pretty cool. And their wings are completely transparent. So it's not white, it's transparent. It's another cool thing. Uh, here we have a, I was going to say a white line, but it's a gallium sphinx moth. Very similar though. And is that the only specimen? I have more of them. I have another one, I think. That's a very beautiful one. And here we have an older, more raggedy looking, uh, Blinded Sphinx. Up here we've got a little uh, ringlet butterfly. Pretty cool in here. This one's a tropical one. This is like a phantom wing or clear wing. Uh, it's beautiful. It's just like a bit out of place because usually I've got some uh, more native species to my area. So Canada, United States, you know, North American species. Uh, so this one is a pink... Um, you're gonna hate me for trying to pronounce it. I don't. I don't even want to pronounce it. It's like Hemilu Hemilukia Hemilusia. It's a type of silk moth. People just call it a sheep moth. Usually a sheep silk uh, silk moth. It's beautiful. Nice pink colors there. And this one was sent by Bart Copens. So uh, thank you, Bart Copens, for your beautiful specimen. And this one is a yellow admiral, of course, also seen by Bart Copens. Uh, wonderful species. And the other side, I believe, is very beautiful. Yes, look at that. Whoa. The eye spots. So, admiral. Uh, these were also seen by Bart Copens. And these are two um, uh, emperor, um, emperor moths. And there are subtle differences. So... And uh, this one is an emperor moth, and this one's another subspecies, a bit smaller, and these are in the Netherlands, in Europe, so they're a bit rarer as well. We can see there's almost no, no differences, uh, except of course for the size, and they're very beautiful, very beautiful eye spots, and these are also Saturnian day. Here we've got another sphinx moth. This is a, another European species. And this one's from France. Once again, my friend gives me this. He goes to France every year to visit his family and he brings me back moths, which is nice. Here we've got a satyr sphinx moth. So, beautiful eye spots. These are really bad, really horrible, completely destroyed I'm a hair streak. Let's look at the underside oh it's a bit high underside yeah that's a that's a hair streak a bit broken there <laughs> looks like someone stepped on it but it's actually me trying to pin small butterflies always goes wrong you got your crescent butterfly pearly crescent I believe it's a type of checker spot and here we've got oh um Agraulis venule, which is a gulf fritillary. And look at this, look at this. Isn't that just amazing? Those silver, elegant silver spots, like, whoa. The beautiful sunset orange there. It's all like smooth and perfect. This is my favorite um, butterfly, I must admit. It's either that or the tiger swallowtail. Beautiful butterfly. A viceroy. This is not a monarch. This is a viceroy. And the way you can tell is that there's a little line here. Splitting the wings. A little line here. And it's a bit smaller than a monarch as well. 
And then also the Monarch will have more spots on the body here. But yeah, still look very beautiful. Very beautiful. Okay. Alright, let's go into the Saturnia Day. Not as if we didn't already, but let's move to more of the Saturnia Day. My arm's getting tired and shaky. Sorry. So you got a female Polyphemus moth, Antherea Polyphemus. Beautiful ice moths. They're named Polyphemus after the Greek uh, the Greek Cyclops, who was also named Polyphemus. You can see it's a nice pink color, it's a nice brown. I'm gonna flip them over. You can see it looks like a it's pretty camouflage. Good luck finding that uh, in nature. Like, unless they're on a building. And even more camouflage, the Luna Moth, but I'm gonna get there soon. Here we've got a, this little tiny cotton candy uh, guy. It's a rosy maple moth. And I really hope the camera's gonna focus on this because they've got the cutest face on a moth. Look at that. And the beautiful yellow and pink. These are unique. Like, you can't find anything that looks like this. Well, you can, but, like, <laughs> they not they don't look as beautiful as this. And they look like a cotton candy. They look like you could you could eat it and it would be sweet. And my camera's having trouble focusing. I'm trying to adjust the lighting, maybe. Alright, so here got a male polyphemus moth. Finger popped in again. Let's say hi. And the camera's really fussy. There we go. So another polyphemus moth. Uh, we got here an Io moth, also sent by Bart Copens. This is Optimaris Io. Beautiful eye spots. And I know Bart that um, if you're watching this, that Optimaris species are maybe one of your favorite species, but they're beautiful, and I know why you like them. They're stunning. Up here we've got the mighty Luna Moth. Atias Luna from North America. Very beautiful. Very beautiful indeed. Some rosy maple moths. Uh, gypsy moths. These are everywhere. Uh, invasive species. Male and female. This one is some kind of a tussock moth. And you can see the female actually does not have wings. Um, it just sits around and waits for a male, and the male looks similar to this, maybe, not for that species. They look like tussock moths, you can look it up. They look a bit like these, but smaller. Oh, I actually have one. I remember I had a, a white, a white marked tussock moth. Uh, they make beautiful caterpillars, look up the caterpillars. Uh, some more smaller moths, another comma. I'm gonna cheat. What's your name? Forest nymph, right? Wood nymph, <laughs> close. These I haven't seen in a while. And a uh, red admiral. Another uh, nymphalisantiopa. Some spanworm moths. Gypsy moth, sorry, my chair is uh, doing some weird, weird sounds when I move. Some underwing moths, very beautiful. And that pretty much sums up the moth box. So yeah, shut up chair. Here we have one of my favorite boxes, Luna Moth, so Mantis Luna from Canada. Found these in Irish New Brunswick in 2019. So. Caterpillars, by the way. These are the cocoons. So they're softer. And here we got a male. And a female. Another female here. And another male. And this one has got, like, fat and oil on it. So I'm actually going to put an ethyl acetate or, uh, Basically poison. Not the whole thing. I'm going to cut off the abdomen, put it in there, and it's going to look all fresh. Like this. White and fresh. 
and then I'm gonna put it back. A good example is actually my Luna Moth here. This one looked exactly, so this, it looked like this, all brown, and I put it in there and look, all white. So here, you can see how beautiful these are. And that's the Luna Moth box. So yeah, this is pretty much my entire collection. I've got some more species in other bots, but they're too messy for really to put them here. So I hope you enjoy. This is really awesome. So as you can see, my collection has grown a lot. If you go to previous previous videos, you can see that my collection is much smaller than this one. So yeah. This is my insect collection, 2020, and I'm going to label them very soon, don't worry. I promise I was going to label them, and I'm working on the box for the first 100 YouTubers I ever had. So, yeah. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and that you have a wonderful day. This was my insect collection, and I'll see you next time.